Hi, this is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health. This is going to be a little redundant for some of my longtime followers, but I did want to do a short video on cortisol and weight gain specifically. And uh, cortisol is an adrenal hormone, and it's like uh, cortisone. We know what cortisone does. If you have inflammation, let's say you have tendonitis in your elbow, or you have some kind of allergic reaction, or you're having some kind of massive inflammation somewhere, you get a cortisone shot. Guess what happens? It uh, makes it go away. It's pretty miraculous. In fact, at one point it was thought that it was going to be the most miraculous drug ever discovered, and, and in a sense it is, but it had a dark side, and that was that it shut down the immune system and did some other things when it continued long term um, and manifested in a, a disease called Cushing's syndrome when, um, when administered in huge doses. Now, Let's talk about Cushing syndrome because what is Cushing syndrome? Well, Cushing syndrome is actually it's basically metabolic syndrome. It's characterized by having uh, you know a lot of body fat, uh, insulin resistance, and high high glucose. It often manifests as diabetes. Heart disease becomes very prevalent. Um, that type of obesity is uh, definitely an uh, abdominal obesity, upper body, uh, apple shaped, or whatever you want to call it, but the kind associated with insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, pre diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome, uh, whatever you want to call it, that's, that's what it's associated with because cortisol, the hormone, uh, basically blocks the action of insulin. Uh, cortisol is thought to interfere with the action of leptin as well. Leptin is uh, very, very significant. Uh, leptin basically is the hormone that communicates with the hypothalamus in your brain and tells your body whether you need to store more body fat or burn more body fat. So that could be kind of important when it comes to your uh, when it comes to weight gain because interfering with leptin is basically everything. That's the most important thing. Uh, there is no hormone that, that regulates your appetite and your metabolism and your, you know, your fat burning enzymes and your fat storage mechanisms uh, you know, more completely and thoroughly than the hormone leptin. It is the boss. And uh, the fact that cortisol interferes with it is uh, pretty strong evidence that it has a role in weight gain. There's just an article that just came out, and a lot of people were not too pleased about this article in this study, but the study showed that dieting is uh, one really good way to raise your cortisol levels. <laughs> um, that's not good. <laughs> and the article was saying, well, actually, dieting may be something that leads you to becoming fatter because it raises cortisol levels. And I know lots of dieters who have dieted many times, and yes, indeed, it made them get fatter in little increments all the way up. Diet, fatter, diet, fatter, diet, fatter, all the way up the spectrum until they became, uh, you know, developed a very, very serious weight problem um, from what was a minor weight problem that maybe they had in, in childhood and went to Weight Watchers and next thing you know it, they were, uh, they were 300 pounds and had a serious, serious problem on their hands. Um, so dieting, yes, dieting can definitely raise cortisol levels. I just had a paper sent to me today as well by Russ Ferris, who uh, is one of the greatest experts on cortisol. He wrote a book about cortisol called The Pot Belly Syndrome, which pretty much says it all in terms of uh, what cortisol can do to your belly. It can make it like a big pot. Um, but he just sent that along to me today that showed that uh, altering carbohydrate and protein levels in the diet can also influence cortisol. And uh, surprisingly, for some of you low-carb fans out there, um, the higher the protein and the lower the carbohydrates, the higher the cortisol levels. The higher the carbohydrate and the lower the protein, the lower the cortisol levels. So we think of this new epidemic as being something that was caused by eating less fat and more carbohydrate. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily think that's the case. And if you look at correlations across the globe, Yes, uh, obesity is getting worse everywhere, but it, you know the cultures who eat the most carbohydrate and the least uh, protein seem to be the ones that have the longest longevity and the smaller BMIs, uh, less body fat, such as the Asians. So that's just a rough theory. There's a lot of people who disagree with that, but I'm just you know sharing with you what the paper said and uh, what the experiment with the results of that experiment what they what the conclusions were and that was that low carb high protein low carb uh, raised cortisol levels now even some of those low carb ish 
authors out there like Barry Sears and Diana Schwartzbein, a couple of my favorites. I wouldn't say I agree with everything that they have to say, but they're pretty sharp and they've made some great contributions in my overall understanding. And I definitely, uh, you know, I'm very happy with that I came across their work and integrated it into my own beliefs. But they talk about going too low in carbohydrates, raising cortisol as if it's common knowledge in basic human physiology. I believe that it probably is, and uh, I have a huge horde of people who, after many, many years of being on a low-carb diet, started to run into some health problems, and they were looking for answers, and they ended up finding me because I was the only person they really felt comf- you know, comfortable and confident with because everybody else out there that is all about low-carb feels that you know carbohydrates are bad, and everybody who's uh, saying, hey, those low-carb diets are bad for you, They all believe that saturated fat is bad and fat is bad for you. And, you know, any person of intelligence would know that neither carbohydrates or fats are bad for you. (laughs) Imagine that. It's like uh, saying that air causes heart disease or uh, impure thoughts. Uh, It just doesn't hold any weight. Um, You know, human breast milk, for example, contains all those elements. Um, And it doesn't, uh, I don't think it's a purely villainous substance that is uh, clogging the arteries of our infants. <laughs> but uh, anyways, there's. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up today. Cortisol is something that should be on everybody's radar when it comes to weight gain. It can definitely interfere with leptin. It can interfere with insulin, raise your insulin levels. What happens then? Oh, fat goes into your cells and the insulin stays high and it won't let the fat out and you start to pile weight on. Uh, cortisol is highly and intimately involved with all those processes. And I think it's something that uh, deserves a lot more attention than it usually gets. So uh, anyway, that's that. Be aware of that cortisol and weight gain connection. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health, and I'll talk to you soon.